Okay, so we replaced some of the text on our template. Um, just to complete the previous video where I did some of the replacements. Um, and I mentioned that if you don't know HTML, stick around. If you don't know HTML, you probably are very confused now because I flew through a lot of code and I just replaced some bits and pieces with very minimal explanation. The thing is, HTML, although very basic, very kind of not that complicated topic, it still has a lot of rules there. And knowing HTML is crucial for you to be a Django developer. So I'm not going to explain anything here. Not that much anyway. So I do recommend doing some HTML course uh, on YouTube, Udemy, whatever, or at least check some documentation. W3 uh, is a very good source for HTML. Uh, so I suppose like, you know, just so you know, I'm not going to go into detail of HTML. So, um, but I will go through my code and replace some bits and pieces here and there. So we continue doing our project. So I suppose if you don't want to spend time on doing the course HTML co course and try to get what I'm doing here, you, you might continue, but then know that knowing HTML, CSS and JavaScript is something that you might want to know before you become a, a Django developer. Anyway, so we are here and announcement, big announcement. I'm a liar. I'm a filthy, filthy liar because I told you that we don't need a model for our website app. And it's not true. We actually need a model. And it's a, it's a good thing because this website app is a very, very simple app that does very minimal job in here. But it's kind of crucial from my perspective because that, that's the glue between all the other apps. So basically what I want to do in here is I want to create a, um, a model called, let's say, my app that will take from model. So it extends a Django model class that is used for um, for building database, basically. And in here we are putting some fields. So my app model is supposed to kind of keep track of all the apps that I'm building. And then thanks to this kind of approach, we can programmatically render each of the app in here that's that's the kind of idea i have in here so in portfolio i want those those um those models to be rendered programmatically using the the my app model and you'll see in a second how first let's build the model so let's start with the name of our portfolio app and that's gonna take models that string field uh no sorry char field char field uh, char field requires us to tell it uh, what's the max length of it because it's uh, there are two different text fields and one is char field and one is text field. Text field allows you to uh, put in as much text as you want. Char field is a little bit more uh, simple and it requires you to say I want it to be max say one to eight uh, length or it can be 10 if you want but I don't think it's a good idea for an app name. I suppose nothing over 64 characters should should go in there. I don't think I want anything longer. Um, um, also, so by default, null is false. So we can't leave it null. And it's a good idea because we don't want to have like a tile with no name. We click here and we don't know what that is. We want to know what the name, uh, what is the name of, of that app, but we don't need to write it because by default it is true. So I'm going to leave it like this. This is the, on, the only information I need. Mm, also, what, what else do we need? Uh, we might want to have some description that will indeed uh, models that will use text field, which can be put like this. No arguments required unless we want to allow it to be null. So if I want it to be null, I heard that the, the right approach is like this. The fault is nothing and then we allow it to be blank so there are two things there's null and there's blank blank allows this string to be saved in a char or text field so the the right approach as far as i know with with django is instead of going null true blank true we only go with the empty string that that means we only have a string data there we don't allow to put null data in there which is a different data type and can cause some problems Okay, so we have a description. Let's say we want to know uh, when it was created. So created at, and there is something called daytime field here. And there's something like, what was it? Auto now add. So that means automatically set it to now, to the time and date from now, but only when we add. 
if we want to edit it, it's 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 not going to change. So I'm going to say true. Mm. And maybe it's pretty useless information, but kind of just for practice, we can uh, store user created by by, and that will tap into. Let's just comment that out for a second. So I want to uh, get a from Django dot contrib dot auth, I think it was, dot models user. Yeah, so we want to import a model that comes with Django, which is user, and it's like a built-in user database that stores the information about uh, users. So we're going to put that in here. So basically, whenever I create a new, uh, a, a, a new app, my app entry, um, it's going to store that who who did it and, and if I'm logged in, it's going to take take me as, as the created by. Okay, so that's models. Uh, that's the foreign key. So this is how we practice using foreign keys. Basically, that field will be linking to a user um, database. So some entry from user, which is my, my user, my profile. And so what else do we need here on delete? What do we want to do on delete? If I delete my user, do I want to delete my app? I can do that by doing models.cascade and it's here and we just want to pass it as a uh, as an object without the brackets but I think it's a bad idea in this case because um, if I delete my user I don't want the app to go away uh, we, we might want to keep it anyway so we might just set it to null set to null and if I say this I also have to say well null then has to be allowed okay and now this is uh, saying that okay if I'm creating a, an app mm, and I delete, uh, I, I'm stored as the user that cre created by, but if I delete the user that was the, the author of, of this entry, then we set this to null, okay? And we might also use this related name and we call it my apps, which means in this case, when I'm in user, I can do something like user dot, user object, user instance. So let's say I, and in the future you'll see what I'm talking about, but we can extract from a user object uh, my apps uh, using this this notation. And you'll see in a, in a, in, a, in the future how it's done. Um, what else can we put in here? Let's put in a string uh, def definition. So basically, you'll see also in a second what does it mean. It's uh, it's useful to put something meaningful for you. So I'm gonna just do uh, this. And we can say my app and ID and maybe name. Oops, self, self ID and self name. And if you're familiar with Python, you know what's going on. If you're not, then basically what we're saying for each instance, each instance will have its own ID. And I didn't put it in here because automatically model creates another ID for each new entry. So if, if we have five different apps, then it's going to be one, two, three, four, five. Um, by default, and it's a primary key that we, we use for each entry, um, and then each of them will be um, will have a name, and maybe just to uh, just to keep them unique, I'm gonna add this here, this property. So basically, uh, what I'm saying is name can, must be unique. I can't have two apps with the same name, and it kind of makes sense because in portfolio we wanna uh, have different names, at least uh, even if they do similar things. Mm, okay, so this is how we represent each of the instances of my app model. So when uh, my my app class at the end of the day. Um, so every time I create something, it's gonna have its own ID and it's gonna have some uh, some name, and that's how I uh, represent it as a string. Okay, and maybe last bit would be adding some class meta, and in here we can say verbose name plural, verbose no verbose name plural means when we use Django can display your apps in its admin module uh, and you'll see it in a second. So it sometimes says, okay, this is my app, but this is the section for my apps. Sometimes, you know, apps is enough. It's, it would, it's smart enough to, to use my app and just add S at the end of it. But let's say um, you have a name like company. Okay. So class in here, we call it company. So if, if Django automatically wanted to make it pl plural, it would make something like this, companies, which is wrong. It should be companies. And then, okay, I'm gonna, Django knows that, okay, it's not gonna be as easy as just adding S at the end. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with this name. But in this case, it is as easy as adding the S, but I like to be um, explicit when I'm writing my code. So every time, 
I am telling Django that's how I want to show my um, my apps. Anyway, um, and as far as I know, it should be like this. I can just say like my apps, that's the verbose name plural. And even if I go like this, it will capital capitalize it. So let's go with this format. That's the one. And in here, we can, for example, do something like or, or, or doing. And we just go and list things by which it should be ordered. And let's go with name for now. Okay, we could go for name and then after name if they're well, they're not duplicates in name. So that should be that should be enough. So that's our model done. Mm, now, I'm going to finish here, I suppose, because I've spoken enough. Um, next video will show what to do to sync between our Python model. So this file here and this code here and our database that is stored in here. Okay, so see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.